Coming up on today's episode of the Airborne Unlimited. Sonica aircraft to conduct certification tests for the Sonica 200. Unique launches the H920 Plus. And SpaceX delays Red Dragon mission to Mars. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Odom. It's February 23rd, 2017, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Sonica Aircraft is getting ready to start certification tests for the Sonica 200 with the beginning of 2017 devoted to the assembly of the first two aircraft intended for the ground and flight test of the single-engine two-seater. The first aircraft will be entirely dedicated to ground tests. Vincent Jamot, flight test engineer for Sonica Aircrafts, explained, We tested the strength of the seats, seat belts, and also the engine cradle and front leg by simulating rough and crosswind landings. At the end of February, IABG, a center for aeronautical testing based in Germany and specialized in stress tests, will conduct the wing stress tests. A second plane will be used for the flight tests, which are scheduled this April. The final version of the Sonica 200 has been heavily modified. Some 80% of the initial structure has been redesigned to meet market requirements, as well as EASA certification requirements. The company says it has significantly altered the structure in order to obtain a 750 kilograms maximum takeoff mass for a 4.4 G load factor, a 25% increase over the initial aircraft. Production of the Sonica 200 is scheduled to begin in June 2017. Unique International has announced significant upgrades to its H920 airframe, creating the H920 Plus and an improved pro-action handheld grip. The H920 Plus includes the ST16 Pro ground station, operating on an Android platform with an integrated transmitter, flight controls, and large 7-inch display with an HD 720p video downlink. Users can also utilize video and image playback on the ST16 Pro and download aerial maps. Unique will offer its CGO4, developed in close cooperation with Panasonic, with an all-new histogram, 4 3rd CMOS sensor, 3 times optical zoom, 14 to 42 mm, 16 megapixels, and 4K 30 FPS, 100 megabits per second video resolution as the H920 Plus core camera. The H920 Plus is outfitted with a carbon fiber fuselage and also features a six rotor design capable of emergency flight with only five rotors, quick disconnect props, and a 360 degree three axis gimbal coupled with retractable landing gear that provides an unobstructed view from any angle. The camera and gimbal are capable of a 20 degree up angle. The H920 Plus includes features such as geofencing, variable speed control, dynamic return home, and low battery return home. The H920 Plus will be offered in a variety of configurations with prices ranging from $2,499 to $3,999. The Pro Action Handle and CGO4 Bundle is available now for $1,500. After the break, SpaceX Mars mission is delayed. Come experience the best of model aviation at the AMA Expo East in Secaucus, New Jersey. 100 booths, flying demos, make and take activities for kids, and many guest speakers, including AMA Ambassador Hoot Gibson. Visit amaexpo.com to get your tickets, and we'll see you February 24th to 26th. Build and fly with the most exciting line of kit aircraft on the market, the Sonics Aircraft B models. The B models offer more room and comfort, more fuel, more panel space, more engine choices, and the same great Sonics Aircraft flight characteristics. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing and crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Welcome back. 
If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Errol TV, the new AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at errol-news.net. SpaceX has pushed its planned launch of an unmanned probe to Mars two more years into the future. Speaking at a pre-launch briefing at NASA's Launch Complex 39A at the Kennedy Space Center, SpaceX President Gwen Shotwell said that the robotic lander dubbed Red Dragon will not be ready in 2018, as the company had planned. Shotwell said that the company needs to put more resources and focus more heavily on our crew program and our Falcon Heavy program. That is pushing the Mars mission into the 2020 time frame. That's still better than the original plan, which had Red Dragon heading to Mars in 2022. That target had been revised to 2018. Red Dragon is being developed to test systems and techniques the company will eventually use to send equipment and supplies to Mars in advance of a possible manned mission. It's Thursday, which means it's time for an Aero Community Update, highlighting news and information about the incredible people and organizations that populate the Airborne Partnership Initiative behind Airborne Unlimited. March is a big month for Airborne. Following our daily coverage of HAI's Heli Expo, March 7th through 9th in Dallas, a and must hustle to Louisiana to prepare for our annual AEA Live programming, watched worldwide by the aviation community. Live AEA coverage will take place in New Orleans from March 13th through 16th. Primary live coverage will commence Monday, March 13th, with the webcasting of AEA's pivotal new product introduction series in which upwards of 30 avionics innovators will reveal new products and programs for a live audience. Show coverage will commence at 0830 Central Time. ANN is introducing a new live viewing portal with enhanced functionality, which will be available for all live programming via www.airborne-live.net. Two more days of informative live interviews and special programming will start Tuesday, March 14th at 1200 Central Time with three plus hours of live programs concentrating on the news created by Monday's NPI. On Wednesday, March 15th, the second live interview program will commence at 1300 Central Time. The day's programming will concentrate on recent avionics issues and AEA business. ANN will begin unveiling new program innovations at AEA this year, including pre- and post-show mobile live features involving both the NBI sessions as well as additional mobile live reporting. After these messages, errant jet pilots get sued. Explore No Limits Flying in the FAA Certified Sea Ray Amphibious LSA. One of the top three best-selling LSAs in the U.S., Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray comes equipped with a Rotax engine and exhibits extraordinary handling on land, water, and in the air. Check it out at www.searay.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. The Bristel Light Sport Aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristel is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing a few of those other great stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. You'll probably recall the story about the pilot of the L-39C jet buzzing a Colorado Canyon in 2015, snapping power lines that whip through the air and hit several cars. Now, the driver of one of those cars has sued the pilot and passenger that were aboard the airplane when the incident occurred. The Drone User Group Network has grown by leaps and bounds over the past year, according to a message from the organization's president. 
DUG President Steve Cohen calls on the members of the group to help it continue to grow and that it now has over 20,000 members. A Red Arrows pilot, a veteran of the Falklands War, who took his own life in a hotel in Chester, UK last year, had become depressed about his decision to semi-retire according to an inquest into his death. 62-year-old Peter Collins hanged himself in a room at the hotel after becoming depressed about his new life in semi-retirement. Two T-50A aircraft are now flying the skies over Greenville, South Carolina. The inaugural February 20th flight of the second production-ready T-50A from Lockheed Martin's Advanced Pilot Training Operations Center in Greenville further demonstrated the company's offering in the Air Force's TX competition. Salina Airport Authority is planning a public viewing area at the airport that will include a tribute to record-setting pilot Steve Fawcett. Salina Airport Executive Director Tim Rogers said that the board can utilize funds from an endowment and a construction fund held by the Greater Salina Community Foundation. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's get back to the rest of the news. Plans have been revealed for major facilities upgrades at Goodyear's Airship Operations Base in Carson, California. Improvements include an inflatable hangar for the new Goodyear Blimp Wingfoot 2, which is scheduled to arrive in Southern California by the end of the year. The company has flown its iconic blimps for more than 90 years and has operated its base in Carson since 1968. Goodyear has been transitioning to entirely new designs offering faster speeds, quieter engines, advanced onboard avionics, and larger passenger capacity. Wingfoot 1, christened in 2014, and Wingfoot 2, 2016, currently operate in Florida and Ohio. Paul Fitzhenry, Senior Vice President, Global Communications said, At Goodyear, we honor tradition and drive toward innovation. We are proud to usher in this new era of our world-renowned brand icon and look forward to operating the new blimp at our Carson base. The new hangar will be the first on the Carson airship base and will be built out of 73 miles of partially translucent polyester fabric and will be some nine stories tall and longer than a football field. Construction expected to be complete in seven months. Additional updates will include an enlarged mooring circle for ground handling, a new masting system, and a new maintenance building. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited stream daily, Monday through Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest in aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Keep flying. We'll see you tomorrow. 